Hello, everybody. Richard Michael Lowen here, and I have a real treat for you. This is a 1965 Jaguar E-Type Roadster that Gooding & Company sold at their 2021 Pebble Beach auction. A triple black barn find, so black paint, black interior, and a black soft top. Completely unrestored. All the original fits and finishes. Let's do some real discovery today and find out what these things look like when they were made in 1965. Now just getting a look at this engine bay, it looks completely original. Everything's there. It's completely untouched, unmessed with. This is exactly the kind of car that I like to work on, restore, refurbish. It's really looking good under the hood here. Nice and straight. You can see the original cross ply Dunlop road speed tires there. Original gold paint in the cylinder head. The list goes on and on and on with this car. It is absolutely show stopping, totally original. So yeah, we're gonna get in a little closer here soon. We can see the fuel filter area here. You can see the way the lines routed, the receiver brackets painted black. You see the chassis tag there. Now I know there's a little bit of minor corrosion. Looks like there was some water in the, in the air filter housing. Uh, but that's just low, just isolated to that area. See the distributor here, the cooling lines. There's a strap there for the otter switch harness and the stamping on the picture frame. Now, a lot of the suspension and hinges, nuts and bolts were cadmium plated. And after 40 years, they look kind of brown like this. And you, we're looking in the wheel well there. You can see the undercoating that's just been brushed on, indicative of a very original car. Just stepping back here, we can see Gooding and Company left the car as is, didn't pretty it up, didn't clean it up, just offering an honest car, an honest barn find for the next owner to decide exactly what they want to do. So you can see here, look at this. There's some of the original rubber looking nice and intact. Would you replace that or would you leave it there? Same with the hood here. That's the original mohair hood. You see the it has some damage on the top, but it might just clean up, you know, might that would probably just clean up. Now, one thing is that it didn't quite seat. The header didn't seat to the front windscreen. Looked kind of ugly there. So I wonder if that was even possible. Got an inspection sticker there from 72. So likely it's been sitting since 1972. That's pretty remarkable. Oh, we're back to the engine here on the driver's side. You can see the porcelain manifolds with a little bit of porcelain left on them. Heater box there, definitely looking a little crusty and an old battery. Now we go inside and this is where it's looking really good. We got the original mahogany wheel and look at that, 8,134 original miles. How about that? That's one of the lowest mileage 65s in the world. And it's all original, triple black car. What a dream, it doesn't get much better than that. Looking at the trunk here, really nice fit to the rear of the trunk. And we're back in the engine bay here. You can see that strap that I like to see on that cooling hose. I have never seen that before and I will replicate that in my future restorations, you better believe it. And then we're back to the chassis tag. And you can see the rubber there that runs across that the hood lands on. And you know, that, middle, that minor aluminum corrosion there that will have to be dealt with on the engine. Maybe walnut blasting might cure that, I'm not sure. And yeah, really beautiful car. This is really the way I like to see them. Now we're here on the driver's side. Hinges looking really nice. And again, you can maybe make out the undercoating that was brushed onto the wheel well areas. We're at the firewall here. Those, that's the accelerator linkage and limit bars. Then we get to the, the, the accelerator and the brake boxes to the master cylinders. We can see the way the lines are routed here originally. This is the way I'm gonna, I'm gonna duplicate this for all my restorations, you better believe it. Let me get the original grease marker on the firewall, body number 3018 or 78. That's pretty typical of original cars. I mean, look how crisp the lines are on this thing. And you see the way the, 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 the bonding that was done from the factory for the strengthening connection, the receiver pin there in cadmium, the original rubber. Here we are back to the wiper motor. You can see the original strapping holding on the wiring. You see the alternator linkage there. No, the, sorry, the accelerator linkage. And this is the screen guard for the radiator. It was painted gray. A lot of the, and then inside was cadmium. Nice to see that. There's a bit of felt on the top 
to stop the air from going around. And here we are looking at the top of the cylinder head. Looks like the ignition wire, something's happened to them. They've di just dilapidated. Oh, here's that original receiver bracket. I see these hand painted at the factory all the time. Not, and they were hand painted like brush painted. And it's really indicative of an original car when you see that receiver bracket hand painted. Old battery in there, that has to go. Up front here, you can see the rubber, it's still there. And the front chrome around the headlights and then the way that that finishing chrome strip kind of matches up to it and again yeah it looks like the last time this was on the road was 1972 so really just driven seven years and then parked so what an amazing story that is you can see the chrome is quite pitted there and then we're looking at the wheels here interestingly enough they're painted they're not chromed a lot of the cars that came to the united states had chrome wheels so that's that's a little unique kind of a unique detail of this car Again, the suspension was cadmium plated and that's long gone. And that's why we see it's the slight corrosion here on the edge. The stamping of the picture frame again, and those were stamped after paint. Okay, here we are underneath. The muffler system is completely missing. Look at that, it's non-existent, but look at those floors. You see that pan? That's what you wanna see, a nice undented, unrusted floor pan. You know you got a good car. And at the rear here, definitely showing some signs of uh, oil leak. This is the worst part of the car. Left-hand rear wheel, just a bit of corrosion where that drain is. Now we're inside. Look how nice all the upholstery looks. It, I think this whole, all everything we see here would just clean up really nicely. Look at the carpet. Looks nice and intact. You can see all the way that this upholstery is held in, the way it was cut to be put around that bracket. And yeah, we can see here the original screws and the pop rivet holding on the chrome finisher there. That's really nice to see original details like that. And yeah, the radio, the speaker surrounds all looking really nice. All the controls looking good. The info strip isn't cracked off. The choke knob's missing. Uh, but yeah, everything looks, the, the mahogany wheel looks good. This is all going to clean up really well. I don't think it needs to be replaced. If I was doing this car, I would try to leave all this stuff. I'd leave that original soft top in there. See the unique pattern it has on the inside. You, you can't get them like that anymore. They just don't look right when they're fully redone. And again, another look. 8,134 miles. Isn't that remarkable? And yeah, a lot of dust and dirt and grime. This car would clean up really well. Those gauges would clean up really well too. They just need to be taken apart, cleaned and put back together and probably will work just like they did when it was new in 1965. Going back to the rear here, definitely see a lot of dirt and grime. See the script there on the back, Jaguar E-Type 4.2. Now the hood hinges, we can definitely see here, they were painted after it was all assembled. To do all these springs and get this all set up correctly after paint's a real pain, you end up scratching. So like the factory, they did it right. They got it all set up, the whole trunk, and they painted it all together. See the original upholstery inside the trunk area, some of the original chrome and rubber here. It is pitted, so you'd have to decide whether or not to leave it or redo it. And that's the real joy of this car is all the decisions somebody would make for refurbishment or restoration is, you know, where do you draw the line? And I think it's a real personal thing and it's for everybody would really handle this car a lot differently. So that's what makes it a really interesting talking point really dirty there's a soft top you see it definitely has damage there insect damage or maybe um, rodents or birds or something or maybe even just something falling on it but it's it's held up pretty good this might just clean up really nice with a steam clean or something like that see the chrome finisher there it's held on with some screws and door gaps are looking really good the chrome finisher works with those gaps really nice here we are wow really thorough we're going into the Fuel filler area, again, it looks like this was all assembled and painted while it was on the car. And of course, the E-Type Jaguar 4.2 script, the early 3.8 cars just said Jaguar on the trunk. And another look at some of the original rubber and the bumpers. It would be real shame to take this car apart and throw away all that original rubber. Oh yeah, and this is really the spot here, the left-hand rear, right around that drain where it showed the most corrosion, but really minor. That's really nothing compared to what a lot of people deal with. So at the auction, Gooding and Company realized $168,000 for this E-Type. And I think that's fair. I kind of thought it would sell for around $200,000, so a little under what I was thinking. 
and Goody and Company estimated it at two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars, which was way over ambitious. And I really hope it didn't dissuade any potential bidders because two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand US is what a fully restored car goes for. So yeah, what would you do with this car, guys, if you were the high bidder? I know if it was mine, I would definitely try to do as little as possible. You know, refurbish the hydraulic system, the fuel system, make sure all the valves are free, and then try to run it without doing a full rebuild and getting into it. Now, I know there's a lot of you out there that would love to rip this thing down to all of its constituent pieces, lovingly restore it, and make it perfect. That's what Jaguar Land Rover Heritage would do. There's nothing wrong with that either. Although if you did go that route, you'd end up with a completely beautiful new restored car and it wouldn't be a barn find. It wouldn't be the barn find from Pella Beach 2021 anymore. It'd kind of be something new. All right, well, that does it for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. What do you think? If you have any tips, tricks, comments, or trade secrets, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. All right, that's it. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.